Good morning. I am uh, Johannes Hasseitl and I want to tell you a little bit about computers in the Drupal world. So, a um, short introduction. Uh, I'm writing everywhere on the internet and maintainer of the master module or the AI override. If you have any questions on those modules, come speak to me. Um, some years ago, I founded um, Paul, Drupal, only agency in Germany, and yeah, doing Drupal for, for more than a few years. So basically, what is Composer? Does anybody have worked with Composer so far? Um, did you already work with it in a Drupal project? Only a few? Okay. Then this might be interesting for you. Um, so in general, Composer is a, um, calls itself a dependency manager for PHP. Um, you can find it on getcomposer.org. Um, it's quite similar to package managers, last you may know, like Power or NPM or something like that. Um, I won't get into deep and Composer itself in this session. Um, you can find detailed instruction for Composer itself on the uh, homepage. But I might um, show you some commands in the context of using Drupal. Uh, but in general, um, or in general, you have a composer chasing, you put in your project group folder, there you define your dependencies, and can do some other stuff, and after you did that, for example, you gave it a name, or something, and um, simply Install your project via simple composer commands, composer install, that builds fetch information for the packages you have in your composer JSON from packages.org, and by default downloads those packages in the render directory. So it looks something like that. Simply type in composer install, it fetches all the dependencies. Um, here it's quite fast because you can load it from the cache because I installed it uh, right before in another installation. And at the end, you can see where the libraries are located um, and the project dependencies are installed. A nice uh, thing about Composer is that you have a Composer log that tracks your exact dependencies of every package you downloaded or installed. Um, if a Composer log is given in a project, it installs the exact versions that are written down in that. And that mm, improves the performance of a Composer install. So um, in projects where you I want to make sure that the exact dependencies um, have been tested, or the project has been tested and use exact dependencies on something. Um, you should use the Composer log, and I recommend to, to always put it in the version control. Um, there's um, packages I already mentioned that's simply uh, a server, you can find all the packages like like Twix, Symfony, Doctrine, um, a lot of PHP libraries, I guess most of the PHP libraries nowadays uh, use um, packages. And there you also, also can add your own projects by simply registering and then um, provide uh, source URL to grab the information from. And in the moment you have a composer chasing your project, um, it will be available there with 
police, uh, for example, for protectors. Um, Comporta is even uh, a little bit more, besides the dependency manager. Um, there's a um, built in offloader that supports PSR4 and PSR0, um, even class, maps, and files, set off. But I can show you that in a moment. And that's located at vendor slash autoload, so it should be by default. And you also have the functionality of um, providing some binary shortcuts for libraries you installed. Um, for example, the Project Red Mine project. Um, I provide the Composer JSON, provides part of the Red Mine binary or command that you say, and when installing the project as a dependency of your uh, installing package, as a dependency of the project, that command is located and simply in your vendor bin directory. So you always have um, one place to run the command. There are also script events, and you can provide custom commands, like, um, for example, uh, you can react, react on a post installed command when, when the installation has finished of your dependencies. You can run some PHP script or some shy commands. And in addition, it provides composer plugins so you can adapt the workflow and make instable and reusable RESTful components support composer. So you might ask yourself why to use composer. Um, it's Something like the Kevin Aldi Island stuff where Eric Garfield talked about a lot and used a lot by PHP frameworks, for example, like Symphony, Ravel, uh, Silex, or more projects of those. And there are a lot of components libraries from the PHP world. The architecture of the Composer allows us to build your custom workflow. For your team, for example, um, with the scripts and the plugins that you um, may implement. And a big reason for our Drupal community is that Drupal 8 already uses it. So, how does that work in Drupal 8? Um, the main thing we are doing in Drupal 8 is that we manage the uh, dependencies of our project like um, your symphony or PHP units, Yazoo, Bugtring. That's the composer JSON located in the Drupal core directory. And this way the core team can easily update the dependencies. And Super 4 also uses the offloader provided by Composer. There you can see that in the Composer JSON. That there is the offloader section and it provides some like, um, directories for different components. Uh, directly implements the Drupal PHP file to be offloaded and has some hard coded lastness for performance reasons. So, how do you use Composer in your Drupal project? Um, by default, um, you should need to set up core. That's currently not a trivial task because um, you have to do some steps. At the moment, we are using the Drupal core subtree split by Anti uh, Stöcker. Um, the first thing we would do is uh, simply create a composer JSON. 
um, and that the requirements in the first place should uh, the composer installer's plugin, for example, or any other composer installer that keeps um, that is needed to uh, put your um, core and your modules in the right directory, so it should also work. Because by default, they would be put in the manual directory. And Drupal Core is a package of type core, uh, type Drupal Core, and therefore it would be um, put in the um, core directory by default with using the composed composer and source plugin. Um, and that approach uh, for using Drupal 8 with your own custom composer chain. You would, uh, in addition to uh, copy the index.php and the htaccess files, and you have to update uh, the audible page from the Drupal 8 distribution so that that autoloader will load the autoloader from the autoloader.php will load the autoloader from the composer that is then located in the vendor directory next to the core, not in the core. And with doing that, you have more flexibility over your front controller, the index.php, and in addition, you also um, get the auto-loading auto -loading for every component you will add to your proposal chain. And adding, from, adding new modules and projects then it's quite simple, um, like it's in every proposal project um, you might simply enter proposal requirement to Google slash micro and adding the version constraint for that. Um, micro is a Drupal module that is hosted in package, uh, that is what is provided in packages.org. Um, it has the type Drupal module that's important, so you so the composer installer knows where to put it. And uh, when installing it, it will be put at module slash name of the package when you use the composer installer for that configuration. And um, it's important to take care of your version constraints. Um, for example, if you're using, um, you can rely on a project that uses semantic version, it's more likely to use the current operator than um, the other one, so that you don't update to a um, package that may have backwards compatibility issues in the future release. Um, currently, you would like to rely on uh, packages for power having um, this package you want to download for Composer. Um, you can work around that issue by defining your own system um, repositories and packages. For example, you simply can add a version control URL and if there's a Composer chase located in that project, it automatically um, parses that and makes the versions available that are located in that project, or you can directly and um, break a type of package. For example, in that current um, for a project that does not have a composer chase installed, or a regular the project, you can give the URL the exact reference of the project um, commit, and that case is the, the branch and use the version or uh, commit hash also how you can directly um, link to a zip file or tar file and uh, download a given package. Very important for such custom packages yeah, to add the version so the requirements uh, can check on the version number which is the file. And that's a good way for temporary workarounds or um, 
for development cases, um, but in most cases, if you want to really um, do um, project, uh, reuse your projects you create um, and don't want to share it on GitHub or something like that, or um, for internal projects, it would be best to set up a status server um, that's similar to the packages uh, because that will improve the performance of your installation when you between Composer install or Composer require because their version is already processed and therefore you can um, work faster and uh, dependencies. dependencies can be solved but you can be resolved faster. Um, but to work around this problem for Google projects, um, Webflow and Google created uh, the Google packages in the first place. And that's now available via packages um, Google Composer.org. And there we have all Google projects registered automatically. We are pulling the information from Google Org and that goes package information. So you can easily uh, use that packages server um, to implement any Drupal project for Drupal Org. You simply um, implement that via adding another repository to your Composer JSON. In that case, it's a type Composer, and you type in the URL of the packages server, and after that, you simply can download the requirements from Google Org with their packages server. Um, if you do this and have any issues with that, please go to the GitHub um, repositories for the packages in Google Parse Composer. The first one is for general issues, the second one is for parsing issues if there are from a version number or something like that for it. And an example for how you simply can refine those modules in the first place, you can um, download the Google there, um, or the CTOS module, or something like, like Redix, or even a Rush extension like Rush language. You even can work with um, submodules or meta packages in, in a certain extent. We are working on that right now to also make Drupal packages provide meta packages that so for example you simply um, can put a requirement on a submodule of a given Drupal project and it automatically um, will download the project itself. And in any case your creating your own composer tracing, um, you might stumble upon a case where you want to avoid certain packages to be downloaded. In that case, there is the replace section of your composer tracing where you can uh, put all dependencies that are already implemented in your package. For example, in Drupal Core, there are already um, those Drupal meta packages like um, Drupal, the, like all the Drupal modules. And for example, if you want to start to download jQuery via Composer, but, or you have any component that requires jQuery via Composer, but as you're working with Drupal, jQuery is already in the Drupal core, and you don't have to download it, you simply add uh, that library to the Drupal replace section, so that it isn't downloaded additionally. An important task when dealing with those um, packages in Drupal context is that we need to have many information on that for wide context in the future. Therefore, that's currently an issue in the core issue queue. Um, you are invited to, to review, and um, currently, when you create your, your own uh, composer chasing the project in Drupal or um, you might uh, you should follow that convention. At the moment, it would be Drupal 
Drupal or um, for the Drupal distribution, um, Drupal slash SQL for uh, Drupal project in general. And um, like in a Drupal called Drupal slash views for a sub project or a sub module, sub theme, um, sub profile. Um, like the Drupal daytime is also in Drupal Core. And if you have a custom component you would develop for your project or that was developed for Core, in that case, it was um, prefixed with the parent packages name. So in the case of the daytime component of, of the Drupal Core, it would be Drupal slash core slash daytime. And on Drupal, Drupal packages, we will follow that, that convention to um, avoid conflicts. Another workflow we are used to in the Drupal community is that very easy patching thing. Um, you can do that with Composer 2. There are some plugins, uh, the one in Apple Search, the other is from, from Katie Stacy and Dubflow. Um, that's when you can find packet, um, patches in your pack composer chase by defining a new package. Um, it works something like that. Which is you define a new package and then you have this extra section for the patches, uh, for example, I put the binary key patch of all the um, 7.2 branch, um, have a description of your patch and the URL to the patch file, and when installing or updating your um, packages, this patch will automatically be applied. If you add a new patch to your project, you will have to increase the version number at this place, and then the pad patches will be applied to. Um, and that patches scenario we might do a tiny bit of work to make the experience a little bit better. And for some uh, cases or a good alternative would be to instead of creating patches or applying patches and creating temporary forks, which especially if you are in the use case of applying multiple patches and that way you could easily rebase on that, for example, when a new version comes out. And what you shouldn't forget when using that approach, you have to um, add this package as a dependency that you define. And in Drupal, we also deal with the front-end libraries that are um, some different approaches. For example, the Fusion Component Initiative to put a lot of front-end libraries in the packages or registry. Um, so you can download those with um, Composer. That's all so um, Composer asset plugin that allows you to and to have projects from Bauer or from PM. But those approaches have one um, pitfall that it cannot handle multiple versions of the same library, although the latter ones can. Um, for example, if you want to use different libraries and different themes, um, a new version of Shakespeare, for example, or an older version of a new plugin, then um, you have to work around that. And that's probably more solution with Composer. But from my perspective, um, it would be better to not use Composer for that and instead relying on the, those um, package managers that are built for those front-end libraries or used to be used with those front-end libraries like Power or NPM. So that is uh, an example for the Drupal 7, a for Drupal 7 file. Um, I will go through it in a few steps. Um, at first, you 
add your name to your project file um, and in the case you want to share it. Then add a description, then add the author of the project. Then there are a bunch of custom repositories to implement. At first the packages, the group of packages server, then some custom overrides for or custom components, in this case the slick.js library, or uh, image load, images loaded. Uh, JavaScript library, or for that case, we have an internal um, feature to use for our projects here, since we can implement it that way. Um, but we are will be moving to a status alive setup for such uh, repositories in the future. Um, here we have a custom package definition, and then there comes the big require section with all the modules um, we use. That's not a full list of the projects, but um, you can see that it might um, be a long list to review with all the modules. These two settings are quite important. Uh, if you want to use that releases, for example, you have to kind of specify the minimum stability. In case you don't do that, Composer will not allow you to um, download that packages uh, when they are part of a dependency. And if you prefer stable flag, you can say if there is a stable flag that a uh, stable release that um, is sufficient for the dependencies, then you can use that instead of the latest that release. And at the end, you, are, you can also do, um, add that requirement that is important for developing your, um, that you can put your projects for the development phase. Uh, and then you don't need it to, um, don't need it in your production environment. And here's some example for the phase section. Um, that is, um, I'm not really sure how you put brush brush here. Uh, brush brush, we put brush brush in that um, replace section because we are using the Drupal slash brush as name uh, for the brush, and therefore um, this replace section indicates that um, every fancy that needs brush slash brush. Um, will not be recognized. There's some outloader for our custom uh, script that we use in the project for uh, Composer stuff. In that um, case, for example, we remove files when we install and uh, also have some local settings snippet that will ask if, um, in the case, the local .settings.php is not created if it um, shall create it and can type in your database uh, password and username. And here is a, here's a, custom, a custom script, in this case, to, to clean up all dependencies, compose dependencies to make the workflow better for our developers. So when there's any issue with dependencies in the installation, he simply types in Composer the dependency cleanup, and after that you can uh, freshly install the Composer with uh, the dependencies with Composer installed. And at the end there are some um, configurations for the plugins. For example, I'm using custom installer by David Burroughs instead of the Composer installers um, because there you can use custom types um, you define and have some um, render option to put it in, for example, um, to do some nesting in your modules folder. In that case, our modules will all, uh, all the Drupal modules will go in a module slash Drupal folder, not a module slash console folder because of that syntax. And at the end, there is this preserved path. Uh, configuration that's important, especially 
when you are working with a Drupal 7 because a Drupal 7 itself only has a package with the full root directory uh, of the index.php exists files. And in the case you would um, install a module that would inside all modules, for example, and after that you would update your Drupal core, then the Drupal core would override those um, modules in the modules folder, and therefore you have to make sure that they stay there in the case um, another project would override that folder. And in the same way you can make sure you are setting PHP files the same place or some custom files for, for your pages. And that is mainly tackled with the composer preserve path plugin. And I simply put that in uh, configuration in your composer JSON and it takes care of that. You have an alternative that I guess does quite the same or has a similar approach. I didn't use it, um, but uh, the Drupal Tangra is some um, tool that also has uh, set up so you can put your modules in it for the chase. You can check it out if it's um, if that preserved path approach doesn't suit you. So in general that's very all a lot of complicated and uh, or in general you have to keep in mind a lot of stuff and the kickstart is maybe quite long. So therefore there's an option to create project templates. In the case of our Drupal Composer, um, we created a project template for Drupal 8 and Drupal 7. You can find it in GitHub. And then simply can um, start the project with Python and Composer create Drupal slash uh, Drupal Composer slash Drupal Project and the version number, and then it uh, will provide you with the default configuration for your site. And we are still working on that and want to improve on that. So that it's maybe uh, a good starting point for, for most of the projects to provide some best practices. And the good thing is you can create your own project template. For example, for your company, if you have um, an installation for, for one client for different sites, uh, that will, this is quite the same. You can simply put it in a repository and start from there and then we got a new approach for that. So uh, the composer you are handling this whole downloading stuff and uh, creating a project stuff and in that case it can come in mind to simply replace the rough with composer. Um, so can you convert, uh, can composer replace Rush? Uh, in general, uh, for most parts, definitely no. But you have some parts um, like Drush DL or Drush Link you can replace with composer. So uh, Drush DL is simply for downloading um, Drupal projects. Um, it lacks of dependency management in, in some cases. And you cannot deal with custom libraries or packages libraries. And the composer, using composer required, you are on the one hand bound to a predefined directory pattern because of the way composer works and downloaded um, those plugins. For, and, um, but on the other hand, you have uh, this dependency resolving that automatically looks at your dependencies and go down with it, and in addition you get this composer log where you have all of your components registered the exact versions. Uh, important in the case you are using composer for managing your dependencies or downloading those dependencies, um, you should mix it up with Rush DL so 
um, the composer chase will be incomplete in some cases. You also can replace the um, or more, yeah, most of the parts in, in most situations. Um, that document on Drupal Org that was written by Casper G. Um, that used to be in our project and that they can find a comparison of our approaches to um, tackle some tasks you are doing brush make with Composer. So if you're interested in replacing your brush make file, I simply go there. There's also a Composer generator module uh, available on the group for all that's a rush command that uh, works quite like rush make generate and will create a project JSON um, out of a very simple project. It uh, doesn't, I'm not sure if it uh, fits the Drupal project and what we are hosting GitHub, um, but maybe we will join the effort on that and provide some best practices in that direction. So, um, in general, the community did a lot of work um, to make Composer work, um, especially um, for our uh, Drupal project approach. Uh, I'd like to thank um, the flow, uh, Win Millville, Keith Sutler, David Burris, Esper Chi, and everyone I forgot. Um, today we, for example, we use uh, Composer in our daily project to manage our dependencies and that wouldn't be possible if those guys haven't created the Drupal packages or the subtree to play the Drupal core. There are already some Drupal projects and Drupal orgs that deal with Composer. There are there for a while, like Composer Manager. Um, the Composer module is a wrapper for Rush. Um, Composer Generate is mentioned and some Auto-loading um, modules that we can handle, uh, can handle composer with your Drupal modules uh, right now on the Drupal 7. In general, um, we have some goals with the Drupal composer to, to make Drupal 8 core work better with composer. It's more of a core-ish uh, core task. Um, there are some issues in the issue queue. If you want to, to look at that, simply search for the text composer. Um, we want to make composer be easier adopted by Drupal and therefore create something like Drupal packages, but there's a lot of work to be done. And um, on Drupal composer, the project that Composer, that uh, GitHub project, we want to uh, find some best practices for working with Composer in the project. So maybe there are a lot of tasks to be done. If you all want to do, if you want to help, please feel free to join. Um, for example, testing Drupal packages, uh, try out in your own project and a final issue in our issue queue um, when you stumble upon problems. Um, we might update the packages to the composer uh, to contain documentation or something like that, completes only a fourth of the original packages and looks the same, therefore it might be a little bit um, distracting. Um, we even might provide better packages for the submodule um, issues and um, maybe you will create more flexible instances um, because of the restrictions that current instances have. And one issue in the Drupal context, uh, even of course when you can put brush make, is that in some cases you have missing version. Um, numbers in your .info files um, that will lead to problems if any module requires um, specific versions of a module, like um, with the libraries module. 
to solve that, the, the sandbox google.org by, by Benjamin Forthammer, that's called Compose by, and um, where we try to figure out the problem, so that's simply a module we would enable, and that will have the additional information to your input file while looking in the composer log file, so that you have the sufficient information for your input. So check. Um, we might improve the patch workflow and uh, work at those composer plugins to make them um, more sufficient to the uh, Drupal workflow. And um, handling different versions of the same package might be an issue when we are um, dealing with the multi-site setup. Um, that's something we have to look at too. And uh, so the front-end libraries and assets stuff is, has to be looked at too if you want to manage that in a certain extent with the composer. And there sure are a lot of more issues we might have to tackle. So be free to, to test it out and find issues in case you have any problems. There's a meta document in the groups, uh, Drupal Org groups um, composer, the composer group, um, where we try to uh, we keep we try to keep the document updated with uh, discuss with relevant discussions or documentations or issues. Um, so if you want to have a a rough overview of the project simply go there. And we also have this uh, nice domain drupal-composer.org as a starting point where you have links to all important sections of the project. So feel free uh, to join us and try to both our out. And as I have, if you have any issues, um, come speak to us and we will make it work. So, thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Any questions? Thank you again and have a have a nice day. <laughs>